What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to the next question. This one's gonna be a little bit tricky, a little bit unique, a student sent it to me, so I wanted to make a video for it. So a rocket was launched from a five meter roof and reached a height of nine meters, and then it hit the ground in five seconds. And they're asking, when does it reach the maximum height? So to start off, what I'm gonna do is draw a diagram of what's happening. So we have time here, that's gonna be in seconds. And then we have the height over here and that's gonna be in meters. So what's happening is we're, run, we're launching a rocket from a five meter roof. So right here, so this here is gonna be five meters. So this coordinate, if you think about it, it's at time zero, and then it has a height of five, so we can label this coordinate as zero and five. And so we're launching this rocket, it's gonna reach a maximum height of nine meters, so this here is gonna be nine, and then it's gonna hit the ground in five seconds, so five seconds has gone by, and then the height is gonna be zero. So this coordinate here would be five and zero. Okay, and so what they're asking for is when does it reach the maximum height? So they're basically, at this point, they're asking for that time right there. And so this coordinate here, we can label it as, I'm just gonna put a random uh, letter, let's put M. So I'll put M over here for this time, for the X coordinate of this vertex. And then the height is nine over here. All right, so we really gotta figure out what that M value right there is. Now what we can do is we can put this in vertex form. So you don't necessarily have to, you can put it in any form, you can put it in standard form, you can put it in factor form. The problem is, is with the factor form, we only have one intercept. The other intercept is gonna be somewhere over here. We don't know where it's gonna be. We can figure it out, but I feel like out of all the forms to put this in, it's best to put it into the vertex form, especially because we're trying to find out a part of the vertex. So just, in general, vertex form, if you remember, it's y equals a, um, x minus h squared plus k, right? Where the vertex is h and k. That's just in general. So if we relate it to this over here, the y value, it's like the height, so that's gonna be h. It's not the same as this h over here, don't get it confused, this h here is for this height while this h here is basically the x coordinate of this vertex over here. You don't even have to put h, let's put, you know what, let's just put m so it's in line with the question. All right, these are just arbitrary letters that you could use. So we'll have the height, a, we don't know what the a is. Now the x is the t, it's time, minus m, which is the x coordinate of the vertex squared. And then the k value is gonna be, we know it's gonna be nine for sure, right? Because the k value here represents the y coordinate of the vertex, and we know the y coordinate of the vertex we're dealing with, it's nine. The problem is we don't know what the a is, we don't know what the m is over here, but notice we could figure those out because we have two coordinates, we have zero and five, and five and zero. So what we can do is, just gonna give myself some room here, is we could take this general format that we have here so far, and we could create two equations with both of these coordinates here. So if we start with zero and five, so that means T would be zero, and then the H would be five, so we'd have five equals A zero minus M squared plus nine, like that. And so here we can bring the nine over, so we'll have negative four A zero minus M is negative M, negative M to the power of two is just positive M squared like that, 
right? Negative m squared. There's like a negative one in front, so the negative one would go to the power two. The m would go to the power two. This would be positive one, and that would just be m squared, right? So one m squared, same thing as m squared. So that's that. So we got one equation here. And then with the other coordinate, we got five and zero. So if we plug in five for t and then zero for h, we'd end up with zero equals a, um, I just wanna be careful here, not screw anything up, five minus m squared plus nine like that, right? We plugged in five for t, zero for h. And now we have two equations and two unknowns. Notice we have the a and the m, the unknown, and then the a and the m, the unknown. But we have two equations so we can solve for them. Now solving for them is gonna be a little unique in this case. So what I'm gonna do first is actually expand the five minus m squared. So five minus m times five minus m, if we, if we foil that out, we'd end up with, um, 25 minus 10 m plus m squared plus nine, like that. And then what I'm gonna do, again, different ways you could solve this here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, plug in for this a, I'm gonna isolate for the a here, so that would be negative four over m squared. If we isolate for the a, and then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna plug it in for this a. So we'd have zero equals negative uh, four over m squared times 25 minus 10 m plus m squared plus nine, like that. And so now what we would do is, uh, let's actually just keep working over here is we would distribute this inside the bracket. And so negative four over m squared times 25 would give us negative 100 over m squared. Negative four times negative 10 would give us positive 40. And notice we'll have an m over m squared. So that's going to simplify to just having one m at the bottom. So this would end up being 40 over m negative four over m squared times m squared. Notice the m squares would cancel out. So we just end up with a negative four because there's like a positive one here. One times negative four, just negative four m squares cancel out. And then we have the plus nine at the end. We got rid of the bracket because we took this and distributed to those three terms. And then notice the negative four plus nine, that simplifies to five, like that. And so now we have an equation in terms of one variable, in terms of the m. It's a little bit weird, but nevertheless, it is just one variable. So we can solve. So what would happen here, to solve this, what I would do is, first off, notice there's a restriction, m can't be zero. Right, you can't divide by zero, these denominators. What I would do is multiply everything by the lowest common denominator, which would be m squared, to get rid of the fraction. So multiply this by m squared, multiply this by m squared, multiply this by m squared, and then multiply this by m squared. So notice these m squares cancel out, so we'd end up, okay, actually first let's start with the left side. m squared times zero is just zero. The m squares cancel out here, so it's negative 100 plus 40m plus 5m squared. And now notice we have a quadratic equation, right? So we took this and converted it to this. Both of these are the same thing, right? They're going to give the same solution. So if we rearrange this nicely, from highest degree to lowest degree. You could put this in the quadratic uh, formula if you want. Uh, I think it's gonna factor smoothly though. We could take out a five. Uh, yeah, minus 
is 20. And then this factor. So this would factor into uh, m plus 10, m minus 2. So if, notice from here, m would equal negative 10, m would equal 2 from these two brackets. When does m plus 10 equal 0? When m is equal to negative 10. When does m minus 2 equal 0? When m is equal to 2. So we got two solutions, but when we take this and relate it back to the actual problem, notice m can't be negative 10. Remember, m is a time, right? So it can't be negative 10. That wouldn't make sense. So m is equal to 2. And so that's the answer. This vertex is happening at 2 and 9. So at two seconds, it's reaching its maximum height. And if you wanted to get the full equation, so if you wanted to get the corresponding um, a value, remember one of the equations was a equals, let me erase all this here. One of the equations was a is equal to negative four over m squared, so a would equal negative 4 over 2 squared, which would be negative 4 over 4, which would be negative 1. So a would be negative 1, m would equal 2, and so the equation of this, maybe if they asked for the equation, would be negative 1, we could just put a negative there, t minus 2 squared plus. No. So this equation here would model this situation. And then you could check it too. So you could check it with these coordinates. So notice how we got 0 and 5. Well, if we plug in 0 for t, we'll have 0 minus 2, which is negative 2, to the power of 2, which is 4, times negative 1, which is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 9 does indeed give us 5. What if we tested 5 and 0? Well, if we plugged in 5 for t, 5 minus 2 is 3, to the power of 2 is 9, times negative 1 is negative 9, plus 9 gives us 0. So we can be pretty confident that this equation models this situation. And then from here, the vertex is 2 and 9. And so the answer is that it reaches a maximum height of 9 meters at 2 seconds.